U.S. forces at the naval base in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, are busy today getting ready to deal with al-Qaeda and Taliban prisoners. The first of up to 2,000 are expected to arrive by the end of the week. We have uh, 20 detainees inbound. These represent the worst elements of the al-Qaeda and the Taliban. We ask for the bad guys first. The treatment of the detainees in Guantanamo Bay is proper, it's humane, it's appropriate, and it is fully consistent with international conventions. 20 years ago, on January the 11th, 2002, just four months after the attacks on 9-11, US military guards received the first detainees of the so-called War on Terror at Camp X-Ray in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. 20 men chained in unforgettable orange jumpsuits that would soon become a horrifying global symbol of America's human rights abuses. Four presidents, billions of dollars, countless lies and false promises, and yet Gitmo, what many thought would be a temporary facility, still remains open today. A place the ACLU calls the longest standing war prison in American history, and what Amnesty International once named the Gulag of our times. Their existence will be that they'll be provided uh, a, a humane, but not comfortable uh, place to live. It was a reassurance that wouldn't last long. Human rights groups began sounding the alarm the moment they saw the use of chain link cages to confine the detainees and read reports of the original 20 men having been drugged, hooded and shackled on the 20 hour flight, even being chained to their seats and barred from using the bathroom. How do you respond to charges from some non-governmental organizations that hooding, shaving, chaining, perhaps what even are the words? Hooding, hooding, hooding 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 hoods on the sh shaving, chaining, perhaps even tranquilizing some of these people are violating their civil rights? Um, that, uh, that that's not correct. Um, <laughs> that you've done it or that you've done it or that it's a violation of their rights. It, it simply isn't. As I understand it, uh, technically, unlawful combatants do not have any rights under the Geneva Convention. Guantanamo from the very beginning was conceived by Bush, Cheney and Rumsfeld as basically an island outside the law, where they claimed the Geneva Conventions and the US Constitution did not apply. A patch of foreign soil, where foreign detainees could be endlessly detained without charge, interrogated without constitutional protections, and yes, tortured. The American public, told that these prisoners were the worst of the worst, didn't seem to care. A Gallup poll taken three weeks after the first prisoners arrived in Cuba showed that the vast majority of Americans believed the US treatment of those detainees was acceptable. But the rest of the democratic world didn't agree. In 2004, the International Committee of the Red Cross inspected parts of the prison and concluded that it could not be considered anything other than an intentional system of cruel, unusual and degrading treatment and a form of torture. But the Bush administration kept denying it. The values of this country are such that torture is not a part of our soul. This administration rejects torture. There's a reason why we signed these treaties. To protect my son in the military. That's why we have these treaties. So when Americans are captured, they are not tortured. One of the most disturbing cases was of a 15-year-old Canadian boy named Omar Qadr. Sent by his father to be a child soldier for Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, Qadr was captured by US forces accused of launching a grenade that killed a US soldier and was sent to Guantanamo Bay. A 2006 Rolling Stone investigation described his detention in shocking detail. Guards chained the young boy to the floor of an interrogation room. They pulled his arms and legs behind in a bow position until his limbs strained painfully at their sockets. Eventually, he urinated himself. The guards mocked him, poured pine oil solvent all over his body. Without altering his chains, they began dragging him by his feet through the mixture of urine and pine oil. The idea was to use him as a human mop. He was not allowed a change of clothes for two days. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I think you're getting the medical care. Not here. We left a child, a Canadian child, in Guantanamo Bay to suffer torture. And not only did we leave a child to suffer torture, we, Canada, participated in this torture. Khadr would spend a decade in custody, 
He pled guilty in 2010 to killing the American soldier, but later said he only did so to end the torture he suffered. In 2017, the Canadian government apologized and gave him $10 million. Khadr is now a free man. The despair of indefinite detention and uncertainty was too much for some. 30-year-old Adnan Farhan Abdul Latif spent a decade at Gitmo without being charged. Despite being approved for release in 2009, he never was. He died by suicide in 2012. U.S. officials acknowledge dozens of suicide attempts since detainees in the war on terror were first housed there after 9-11. Over the past two decades, nine detainees have died in custody. Seven, from what the military has said, were suicides. The Pentagon disputed allegations that it was because of abuse. These, at times, inhumane policy choices have had serious global consequences. There's also no question that Guantanamo set back the moral authority that is America's strongest currency in the world. Instead of building a durable framework for the struggle against Al-Qaeda that drew upon our deeply held values and traditions, our government was defending positions that undermine the rule of law. Instead of serving as a tool to counter terrorism, Guantanamo became a symbol that helped Al-Qaeda recruit terrorists to its cause. Obama was right, and groups like ISIS have sent pretty clear, pretty brutal messages through their treatment of hostages. It is no coincidence that the recent ISIS videos showing the barbaric burning of a Jordanian pilot and the savage execution of a Japanese hostage each showed the victims clothed in an orange jumpsuit, believed by many to be the symbol of the Guantanamo detention facility. The greatest single action the United States can take to fight terrorism is to close Guantanamo. On more than one occasion, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled against the Bush administration on Gitmo. Bush says indefinite detention. We, we say Geneva Convention. But the prison camp stayed open. Barack Obama signed an executive order to shut down Guantanamo Bay in his very first week in office. But he was blocked by Congress and the prison camp stayed open. Donald Trump, well, he campaigned on a promise to keep it open. And we're going to load it up with some bad dudes, believe me, we're going to load it up. And announced an executive order in his first State of the Union address to do just that. At its peak, nearly 800 men were detained at Gitmo. Yet only 12 of them have ever been charged, including notorious men like Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and four others accused of orchestrating the 9-11 attacks. But those 12 were charged in military commissions so flawed and questionable, often using confessions given under torture, that the majority of rulings have repeatedly either been thrown out by the courts or are so mired in legal complications that detainees may never see a trial or a conviction. A legal and ethical disaster of America's own making. Successive administrations have admitted they knew they were holding innocent people in custody, including men like 24-year-old Mustafa al-Aziz al-Shamiri, who officials admitted in 2015 was arrested in a case of mistaken identity. He spent over a decade of his life enduring abuses for activities that were carried out by other known extremists with similar names. Today, 20 years after it was first opened, Guantanamo Bay still holds 39 detainees. 14 of them are neither being recommended for release, nor are being charged with anything. They're known as the forever prisoners. 13 others who've been detained for 15 to 20 years have been cleared for release by a panel of America's most senior defense and intelligence agencies, and yet they're still being held in detention including 73-year-old Saifullah Abdullah Paracha, who President Biden cleared to leave Gitmo last year. Captured in 2003, he is the oldest and the sickest prisoner, suffering with heart disease, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Like Obama, Biden has said he wants to close it. In December, though, he signed into law Congress's annual multi-billion dollar defense bill, which the president himself admitted actually makes it harder for him to shut down Gitmo. And the Pentagon's already building a new, more secret courtroom at the base to open in 2023. The war in Iraq is over. The war in Afghanistan is now over, too. These days, we're busy fighting a global pandemic, not international terrorism. And yet, Guantanamo Bay still remains open. 20 years later, a permanent stain on our conscience, an affront to our democratic and constitutional values, and perhaps the most stark and occasionally visible reminder of the failure and the horror of our war on terror.